Um, I guess uh, we can start. Um, so what are we going to do today is uh, to continue our uh, discussion on the hypothesis testing. Um, last time we talked about the one sample test. So this class, we will do two sample as we have reviewed it, uh, previewed it uh, uh, in the uh, previous class. So um, actually some of you actually asked me how to properly define uh, hypothesis testing, what are test statistics, what are p-values. So here I uh, add some new slides uh, to the blackboard. So uh, I go over them. There's no change in the existing uh, material, but I just uh, reorganize some of those and uh, to answer your question easily, okay? So let me get started. Um, I think we would uh, be clear what do we mean by hypotesting. It basically means you try to uh, test a claim uh, based on data. A claim in our class uh, means we have uh, some equality uh, or some value over uh, the population parameter. Okay. Usually we call about with the mean equal to certain value, uh, variance equal to certain value, or the uh, proportion equal to certain value. And the idea is if the data uh, is not too far away from what has been proposed, then we will say that's fine. If it's too far away, then it's not. Okay, So just basically see whether your data close to what we know, and then see whether the knowledge is being challenged or not. And uh, our working knowledge or working assumption we have is called null hypothesis. And the alternative one is the thing that we will rather hold if the null is reject, okay? So to be clear to you that our alternative we really depends on application, as we've said, depend on one side or the two side. We will talk about that again later. So um, I think here I have a formal definition as some of you have been asking me, what is the definition of hypothesis testing? Is a rule, okay, tell us what sample value you have uh, so that now is accept or now is reject, okay? And the boundary point are called the critical value. Right, in some sense, we do example, it's easy to see the example. Uh, is we would say the, uh, look at the population mean, right? Is say the null is equal to three, right, for example. And if the sample mean is very different from three, then you would likely to say reject, right? So you would decide what are the region that the sample mean, you would call reject, what are the region that you call accept, right? The acceptance and rejection are just complement to each other, right? So that would be the idea hypothesis testing. It tell us when you would reject the null, when you don't, okay? So that is very simple. And as we learned, there are two types of hypothesis that uh, the one simple and composite, right? Simple, just single value, composite is multiple values. And um, for class, we focus on the now is simple and the alternative is composite, okay? And for composite, there are actually two types. Um, one is one-sided or two-sided, right? And one-sided, you have uh, two types, it's left and right. And um, just to remind you, uh, when you would know which to use, it depends on application, right? So in terms of quality control for products, if you want the harmful substance to be below certain region that more than certain level that will ring the alarm, then the alternative will be more than, right? The active ingredients would be less than. So that would be the, uh, uh, you should know. And then uh, you can infer from the description from the uh, question. For example, like this example would be consider case of a local club owner who is going to decide uh, whether the mean age of customer has more than 45, like the aging society. And 
he tried to see if there's a for more than 45, then he need to change his uh, entertainment style to more uh, to more older people, right? And in that case, you only take action when the mean age is more than 45. So we just say one sided, okay? And if two sided is a case where you don't know which side it's going to be, and uh, it's a general case, you don't know which one this is the default mode, okay? This is the thing you would use uh, naturally. So uh, an example would be involved like the auditing, right? So a firm claims that their uh, mean revenue is equal to a certain number, and you want to try to see if exactly it's just the number they claim, right? In this case, it's uh, 3,000, all right? And the reason that uh, there's a problem of overestimation uh, is because of if that owner take this to the bank, then overestimation will lead to unnecessary risk assumed by the bank. The underestimation also risky um, is because that will uh, allow the freedom for the owner to underreport the tax, right? So that either overreport or underreport will be a bad consequence. So you would have to use uh, the alternative not equal to if you are the uh, auditor uh, for this company, okay? So here we, uh, another definition, which I didn't define formally, but I, I do it now, is what we call uh, test statistics, okay? So we, we call that hypothesis testing is telling the rule under what kind of sample value you would reject or accept the null, okay? And usually, uh, we will simplify it by looking at uh, some number, test statistics, looks at the uh, mean or some transform mean or some number. And if number is bigger than or more than, then we call the uh, critical values, right? So that is, uh, uh, that is uh, what, what usually is, okay? And that is a simple case would be, look at the population mean, and then you look at X bar. If X bar is too large, then you would uh, reject. If small, you also reject, right? If equal to, not equal to, then the extreme case also rejects, okay? So that is uh, test statistics, okay? And uh, because you have to decide uh, the mid decision under uh, uncertainty, under randomness, right? It will, you will make, for sure, you will make some mistake because of the sampling mistake, okay? So we know that actually two types of errors is one is alpha, one is beta. And uh, we also know that we are free to choose alpha, okay, in all the scenario study. And, um, and you change the alpha, then you will change the rejection region, right? The smaller the alpha, the smaller the rejection region, right? But implicitly also, make the smaller alpha, then you also increase the beta, okay? So that would be the thing you need to remember. Um, the next thing is about the p-value, which uh, we probably didn't define formally. Uh, so the formal definition is uh, the lowest significance level that you would reject action now, okay? So you can lower your alpha, okay, significance level, such that uh, the action now start to get rejected. Okay, and that means that if you, uh, this value is higher than your prescribed certificate level, which is 10%, 5%, or 1%, then uh, you would uh, reject, right? So that is uh, what we have done, uh, uh, I think, last time, okay? So here is a little bit rewrite this, um, just to make it more clear. Uh, there are three steps to do Hypo testing, right? The first is to tell, based on the question, what are the null and alternative hypotheses? And second, you will construct the test statistics based on uh, the property of the, uh, the thing you concern, right? So suppose you're looking at sample mean, okay? And you are talking about, you know, the variance, then you use that, right? Or you are talking about proportion data, also use that, right? If you don't know, then uh, in a genetic case, then you use the T, right? And F will be somewhere we cover at the end of uh, this topic about the F test. So basically you learn uh, only three of them. And 
in uh, advanced class, then you will learn many, 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 many of those. Okay. But uh, with just this class, we will restrict ourselves to only three types of test statistics. Right. And um, you would, there are two ways to proceed. Right. The last step will be either you compare your test statistics to the critical values, which is the boundary of the rejection region, or uh, you calculate the p value, right, and compare to the alpha. I think we have uh, covered this many times, and there are so many examples we have covered, so I'm not going to uh, uh, do one by one, and because we will be uh, doing the same thing when we talk about two sample tests. So uh, I just, I think I just can directly go to uh, the two sample one if you, uh, if you don't have any question. Is there a question before we start? Um, and then we'll start. I hope I give you uh, more detail about what is type of testing, what is uh, p-value, what is test statistics, okay? I hope that would be a little bit more clear. So as we said last time, if no question, we go ahead. So what is two samples test is, um, we focus on the case where we don't know the variance, okay? And in the case that we know the variance, you can just simply replace everything by Z, okay? So everything would be straightforward. But uh, so that's why we just focus on the case we don't know, okay? So everything with the same, uh, if we know, I mean, just, okay? So uh, let's some, we'll start with some uh, notation, okay? We will talk about two independent sample we start with, okay? So as, I don't know if you recall, this is, uh, in the last time I talked about this man and woman, right? Look at the Netflix, right? And you want to see whether men watch more and women watch more, right? So the two group, um, they're dependent, okay? So they have different mean and variance, okay? And, uh, but independence means there are no co covariance, okay? But, uh, so telling you anything, about sigma one cannot tell you about uh, sigma two, okay? So we have, uh, from, we have some random sample from population one, okay? So it will be x11, x12, x1n1. The first one means from the population one. The second number represent the, uh, the ordered observation in the population one, okay? And by construction, there is N1 uh, of sample drawn from population one. There will be N2 drawn from population two, okay? So just uh, in case uh, it's not entirely clear, that will be something like this, okay? So here we have population one, okay? And there's some data here, okay? And this, one, we have mu one and sigma one square, and we have other one, okay? population two, okay? Do look that they're independent, so uh, there's nothing, there's no intersection, okay? So they're completely independent, okay? And uh, this is mu two, uh, sigma two, two. So telling you anything about the blue will not tell you anything about the pink and vice versa, okay? So they're independent, okay? And <clears throat> what are we doing is we have a random sample here. So the first one will be X11, okay? The second one will be X12, okay? And up until X1N1 because there's N1 of them, okay? And similarly, you would also draw something here that will be X21, X22, okay? And X2N2. So that means that N2 of them. So that would be the uh, meaning of what we have, okay? And as I have said last time, uh, our main concern is try to see whether mu one is equal to mu two, okay? So that is our uh, no hypothesis, right? We want to see if the population mean in this two group are the same, okay? So just to remind you what are the application, Right? Maybe you want to see the vaccine is going to be effective for 
boys and girls right, compare whether whether they have a uh, same or young and old right or you want to look at the market sales is it going to be uh boys and girls are the same mean right so these are the uh, reason you want to study the mean right and the reason or another reason is although see you want to see if you need a different treatment you need a different marketing plan right if boys and girls are different right then it means that you would have to think about a different way to sales uh sell your product to them right because if they're the same then you can use the same thing right if they're different then you do different right i also mentioned about the idea uh if you're a Netflix uh, market analyst, right, or the analyst, uh, data analyst there, then you have want to see if, uh, say, uh, is in Hong Kong Netflix, is it Korean drama is similar to, say, Japanese drama or Taiwanese drama or Thai drama, and then you want to see the uh, average uh, duration that people watch those, and then you decide uh, what to do, right? If they're the same, then you just remain the diversity. If one better than the other, then you would probably want to concentrate your investment in a particular type of videos, right? So that would be the idea. So um, there will be two cases we'll study. Uh, case one, okay, will be saying that they have the same variance, so the special case. And case two, uh, you think they're different, okay? And why we have these two, and uh, if there's no reason why they're different, then we just use one, okay? If there's some reason you think they're different, then use two. And then uh, which one to use, um, you can do an F-test, we learn it at the end, okay? Um, the reason why um, you use one, you will later see is it's more easy to, reject the now if under h1 so under under case one okay the power of the test okay is it's more power if you use if it actually is true then use case one is better than case two okay let me repeat the statement if it's actually the same variance okay using case one will let you lead to a better result than case two. So that's why we need to dis di distinguish them, okay? I mean, of course you always can use case two, right? Because you assume not equal to, then you just allow all possible scenario, right? But in the case that it is right, then you would be doing a better, uh, uh, better decision, right? Basically you just make another assumption to simplify your calculation. But you make the assumption if it's right then it's better if it's wrong then you do it wrongly right um is that clear uh what does that mean okay so i hope okay so here we need to introduce uh, some notation here okay and x1 bar okay and x2 bar will be the mean of uh, each sample, right? So each mean. And because of a random sample, uh, uh, the typo here. So the mean will be just uh, its own, okay? And variance will be divided by ni. So sorry, the typo, okay? So, uh, because the same as what we have before, right? Just have a, before we have the same thing like this, right? Okay. And now only difference is we have I here. Okay. I is one and two, right? I is one or two. So, okay. Sorry for the uh, typo. Okay. So now, is that okay? Okay. And basically everything from the, uh, one sample extend, right? And we can also define sample variance, right? You just each group calculate its own uh, variance, right? Each observation minus its own sample mean and then 
Oh, I guess I have also other typo. I'm sorry. So the minus one here, minus one here. I'm sorry. <clears throat> um, yeah. Okay. So I'm sorry for the typo. I I I I'll upload the uh, correct version. Uh, but is that okay? So because sample variance, okay. And now we have this, then we can uh, actually make some assumptions here, okay? We will assume normal a bell curve for both cases, which we have been assuming, okay? And this will set actually the sample mean, okay? The two sample mean will be also a bell, okay? So just basically go back to here, okay? Here we can come up with the sample mean, okay? And also the sample variance, okay? And what is said here is under normal, we should have this, okay? A bell curve, okay? And similarly, we have this, we can calculate X bar two, S two square, and also we have a, uh, and the center is at mu two, right? And the center is at mu one, right? And the variance, if we know, then will be sigma one square over n one, right? And this will be uh, sigma two square over n two. Okay, so this is the uh, assumption we have. Okay, so far. Okay, so I think this graph is already. Describing everything we know uh, about the setup. Okay. Is that clear the setup here? So we assume, I mean, of course, we actually assume there's a bell at the beginning, right? There's a bell here. And this is also a bell, right? This bell would mean that's why there's a bell there. Okay. Is that clear? All the assumptions we have. Okay. Underlying the two population, there's a bell. That's why the sample mean also a bell. Okay, is that okay? So now I guess we can actually do. Uh, so just recall, we say the bell, you have two bells, okay? And if they're independent, the difference of the bell is also a bell, right? Just you add up their variance, okay? And the mean just take the difference, okay? So that is what we learn. From topic uh, three, we talk about random variable, the two bells, right? Uh, you subtract the two bells, the mean just difference the mean, and then the variance is just add together. Okay, this is uh, the idea, right? Just I don't know, you still recall, right? Just basically like this, right? If I bell here, and there's another bell there, okay, I don't know, okay? And that the difference will be just like this, right? So we, Right, so that would be the idea, right? The difference we get you the bell. Okay. Anyway, um, so that is the idea. So now should be uh we have to clear, right? Because what we're trying to do is this is the bell. We want to test whether this is zero, right? So basically, although we have a two sample test, we just focus on a single variable which is normal. Okay. So this is exactly a one sample test, right? So that's how we do, okay? So the idea would be, uh, as I said, you want to compare performance, whether store A better than store B, whether product A better than product B, or a scientist is vaccine A has more antibody than vaccine B, right? So on average. So this is um, uh, how we can uh, we are going to proceed, okay? There's one complication here is um, if we assume, okay, the variance are equal, okay? Uh, we can estimate uh, this sigma, okay, in a better way, okay? So this is, uh, uh, here is the way that how we estimate this is going to estimate this guy, okay? 
uh, okay, because remember, right? If we have this, a normal mu sigma n, right? If you don't know the sigma, right? The t test will tell us x bar minus mu, right? S over n, right? Is t n minus one, right? So we will be using exactly the same thing here, right? But only now the difference is now it's not x bar, but it's like x bar one minus x bar two, right? And the only thing new here is how can we estimate sigma, right? And before we just use uh, all the data, right? And uh, how can we do the uh, estimate sigma square in this context, right? Because uh, there's some issue, how can we do estimation, okay? And turn out, which we try to convince you this case is I have sample mean of one, and sample mean of two. Here is I, sorry, this is sample variance of one and sample variance two. What we have here is a weighted average. Okay, it's a weighted mean, okay? So the weight for one is, is sample size. The weight of two is like his sample size minus one, okay? Not exactly sample size, but sample size minus one. And this will be a good estimate of sigma square okay and why is better because this is unbiased okay and also efficient okay so that is the reason why we use this okay so i try to i mean convince this is right i quickly go to the uh, uh some of the proof idea but i'm not going to do the proof but i just show you the last step okay and actually you can rewrite okay so here, this one, look at the numerator, okay? When you simplify this guy, okay? The numerator is actually talking about population one, each observation minus the mean of the group and square, right? And same for group number two, okay? So this is sum of the squared deviation from its own mean, right? So that is the variance idea, right? The numerator, right? And the reason why you use the own because you uh, actually should use mu one and mu two, right? If you know mu one and mu two, you should replace it, but we have to estimate that, okay? So that's why you can see since we estimate two item here, okay? That's why you have to minus two, okay? That is exactly what we said about the degree of freedom. Actually, you met, you are estimating two parameter, so that's why minus two. Okay. If you know mu one and mu two, then you don't have to minus two. Okay. And um, as I said, um, you can actually prove this is unbiased. Okay. But I I guess we don't want to do the proof. Okay. So let's take it as given. Okay. And the textbook they don't explain. Okay. That's okay. We use this one. This one's better. Okay. I'm trying to say this has some meaning okay it's actually an unbiased estimator okay i think this one is more intuitive but uh uh but usually you have data is s1 and s2 so that's why uh this is more ugly formula i don't know whether you like this one or not but uh this is just the weighted average okay the main idea is like you have sample variance of one population and you have other one right so what is the sigma will be just average. I, I, I think if you want to talk, you keep your voice down, please. Thank you. Um, so that is the idea. Okay, is there any question? So the, so basically, what we do is exactly the same thing here, okay? So this one will be just, this is what we do, hypo, it, we do the test on this one. So we test this guy, okay? So which means that this is zero because this is mu one minus mu two, okay? So this is zero. And under equal variance, so this is why they're saying, 
Okay. So that is exactly the t test we have done, right? Because this is minus zero. Okay. You take a square root of this guy. Okay. This is exactly what we have, but the only difference is this one. Okay. N one plus N two minus two. So there are two difference, right? Just to write down here to make sure that you would see what we have. Okay. Before the t-test like this, right? So if you have this, this is your t-test. The t-test will be t equal to, uh, if the h now is mu equal to zero, okay? So we just x bar minus zero over s over, uh, you just uh, maybe easier to see this one, right? S square over n. Right, you just take the square root of this guy, but you replace it with the s, right? So this is this one, right? Let's go to here, right? So we have this is n minus one, okay? So now the main difference is this y n one plus n two minus two, okay? And here we particularly fix zero, okay? And uh, and probably you want to ask if this is not zero, right? If you want to see if this is, can you do that? Say equal to two, uh, you can do that. It's just the same thing, okay? So, but uh, for simplicity, focus on the case whether we tested the same, okay? Because this is, usually we care, okay? We usually not care about, uh, the difference is equal to some number. We just test the difference, okay? So that's why uh, you don't have something here in the numerator. Is that clear what we are doing? Okay, exactly same as, uh, almost exactly same as the ones, one sample test, but uh, now the two different thing is uh, we have to use uh, n, my, uh, n plus one, n one plus n two minus two, because the reason is because we have to estimate this guy, this two guy, so we lose some degree of freedom. And the second thing is, um, uh, we have to estimate this guy, okay, in a better way, right? There's a, a complicated formula to do it, okay? So that is the several different thing, okay? And of course, we just apply formula anyway. So, uh, so let's get, uh, let's see the example, okay? So this is the same thing, okay? Uh, just describe how you do a two-sided one, okay? And, uh, this is the rejection, right? If you have more than that, okay? So let's see the example, okay? And um, just finally, actually, uh, you'll be the same when you talk about the interval estimator, right? Because if you want to see the, uh, this, right? It's just this guy, right? If you remember, right? You just take a square root of S square, over n, right? So now just everything, uh, you just replace everything according to uh, what we have, okay? This is what we have in the uh, topic uh, five, right? So this is the same thing, okay? Is that clear? So there's nothing new here except you have a new estimate. Uh, you have to, another, you should have another way to estimate this guy, right? And uh, this guy will be a little bit different, right? And this guy a little bit different, okay? So everything is the same formula there. Is that okay? Is there any question? I guess it'd be clear if you go to ex example that would give you an idea, how can we do it, okay? So we have a two population, okay? And both are normal, okay? And same variant, so you can see the question already gives you the same variant. So we can use the formula we just learned. And we'll talk about the case without the same variant after the break. Okay. So um, now we have a simple random sample okay, of psi 50. So that means this means n1 is 50, and uh, x1 is 40, and s1 is 4. Okay. There's another random sample that is. Uh, we have n2 is uh, 40, okay? And uh, x2 is uh, 42 and uh, s2 is three, okay? 
So we have assigned a task to check if they're the same mean or different mean. Okay. So <clears throat> the first thing to do, okay, um, is the following. Okay. So just go back to uh, let's see what we meant here, right? Uh, maybe I have a uh, whiteboard here, right? So what we have is actually we have an x1 bar, right? We also have an x2 bar here, right? And I think the mean is 42. Yeah, one is 42, one is, right? One is 40. And uh, we don't know the sigma, so we don't really know, okay? So what we are looking at is look at the difference, right? X1 minus X2, okay? And the two bell difference, right? Uh, if we look, they're the same variance, right? So this is sigma square over N1. Um, this is sigma two square over N2, okay? Sorry, still sigma, the same variance. Right, uh, right, sigma square. Okay, so the difference actually this means this is two here, right? And there's a bell accordingly here, right? And this is just uh, sigma square over n one plus uh, sigma square uh, over n two, right? So that would be uh the variance, right? So, and what we know, right, from the theory is uh, we can transform this to T, right? How can you transform this to T? All right? It just, uh, and what we are trying to claim. Okay, it's, uh, it is actually around two, right? Uh, okay, sorry, I, I take it back. What do you mean? Sorry, I should, sorry. It should be, this is mu one, okay? And this is, uh, mu two, and under the now actually the same, okay? Actually the same. So they actually follow the same, same one, okay? And that means that they, the difference under the now, this is zero here. So under the now, this is zero, okay? The same. So, um, and uh, so what we have is, uh, Is the sample mean of this is, I don't know, I don't know where, where the mu is, but uh, so this is 40, okay? And this is 42 here, okay? So this is what we have, okay? And the difference, what we have is just two here, okay? So the question pretty much is asking is, we want to check if the difference is, equal to zero, right? So basically asking is this area, okay? And of course, compare to both sides, okay? Is this area less than or more than alpha over two? Okay, so that is the question, okay? And <clears throat> the problem is we don't know sigma. You know sigma, then we're done, right? Because it's a bell curve, we know the variance, then we're done, right? Because I, I think N, we know N1 and N2, right? N1 and N2, uh, what's N1 and N2? N1 is uh, 50 and 40, right? So basically we know 50 and 40, right? So we need to, we know everything. If you know sigma, then actually we can estimate, right? But we don't know sigma, right? So uh, one way to do it is to have what we call SP here, right? SP, okay? SP is a weighted uh, average of uh, S1 square, right? Of S2 square, okay? 
n, right? This is n1 minus 1, n2 minus 1, right? n1 plus n2 minus 2, n1 plus n2 minus 2, okay? So that would be the average, right? And the transformation would be just, you subtract the zero, right? Over square root of sp square over n1 plus sp square over n2, okay? So let's transform here. And once we transform this everything, okay, this becomes zero, right? And this is n1 plus n2 minus two. So this is T uh, 88, right? Because 50 times 40 is 90, right here, right? So you need to transform this guy to here, right? What is this guy? Okay, what's this guy, okay? And then you calculate this area. Is that clear what we're trying to do? Okay, so basically we start with a two bell with a pink bell and the green bell. And then under the node, actually they say they're same, okay? And look at the sample, you, one is 40, one is 42, okay? Oh, uh, I think I have X1 minus X2, right? So I, sorry, I guess I have to, uh, should be negative two, so it should be other side, sorry. It should be negative two here, okay? Negative two here. So we're gonna check this area, but the same, right? So we're going to check this area if alpha over two or not, right? More or less. Okay. So, uh, sorry for it. Oh, this. Okay. We want to check this area. Okay. Because we can't check this above, we will check the below. That the same thing. Okay. So we're going to check what is two transform the transformation like this. Okay. So that's why the first thing we need to know uh, is look at what is this guy. Once we know plug this number in, right? And then we can calculate where it is now. Okay, so that is the, the way we proceed to solve this problem. Okay, so let us uh, actually solve it. Okay, so the first thing to see is um, the variance of the first guy is 16, right? And the variance of the uh, second one is nine, okay? And Actually, you'll be somewhere between six and nine, okay? And that is coming from the uh, weighted average, okay? And you can see why that's the case, right? Because you have more sample on 16, so that's closer, 12.8 is closer to six, 16 rather than nine, okay? So if you have one sample, have a lot of sample size, then you would be, the two the variance were very close to uh, the one with higher sample, okay? Because the weighted average, okay? If they have the same number of sample, it's just simple average, right? So that would be the idea is 12.89, okay? So that would be the thing that you can add to the whiteboard here is 12.69, uh, okay? And let's go back to here, okay? So this is, nine here so this is the first step okay now we go to the second step here is to calculate what the number negative two it represent okay negative two when you transform it to here is negative 2.6 okay so go back to the graphic here it means this this is negative 2.645 okay so that is uh, exactly this transformation here, right? So this is the transformation we've done, okay? You go to this formula and we get to here, okay? So as we said, we want to test whether, check this area, right? So this area would be simply, okay? Using our T, right? Just T, sorry, just a T, this, okay, negative 2.645, 88, true. Okay, and remember you have to multiply by two because the p-value, right, for two-sided test, you multiply by two. 
Okay. So uh, let's turn now. Okay. To be the number is at one percent. Okay. So maybe I just go to the Excel and do show it to you. Okay. So the answer is uh, two point six five. Okay. So it will be just T. This. Okay. Negative two point two two five. T eight true. Oh, am I right? Let me check. 2.625. Okay. 2.625. Okay. Uh, oh, I forgot two times. Yeah. Two times. Okay. So it's a. Uh, one almost like one percent slightly more okay so that is the p value okay so if you use the five percent then we would reject it right and ten percent also reject but one percent we just can't okay it's very close to one percent so this is just as we said it just uh like close to 0 0.01 okay so if you use five percent then you reject is that clear how we do this one okay so <clears throat> and the other way to do is to use the critical value method right so that method asking you to see um looking at this area okay if this alpha over two okay what would be that number right that would be t88 okay upon 025 suppose i use a 95 percent okay so this number is simply uh t inward upon 975 okay why 975 because 0 0.025 on the right the left is 0 975 okay so uh if you want i can show it to you T dot inwards uh, upon nine seven five eighty eight. Okay, so this one point uh one point nine eight. Okay, so that means that look looking at the back here, uh, that means that this number, okay, is one point nine eight, and this is negative one point nine eight. Okay, so the critical value okay is uh much inside compared to the test statistics which is 2.645 so you also reject right so regardless of what uh method you're using you'll reject at the uh five percent is that okay i mean the same procedure here is there any question Okay, so the last thing I want to talk about before the break is how to do confidence interval. Okay, if you want to predict uh, what is the difference between the mean, that will be just the same. You just took a difference, right? And this is just we have already done. We did it, right? The same thing here, right? And this is just here. Okay, so this is how. We do the CI, but they basically part in the formula. Okay. And this is exactly what usually you do, right? When you estimate this. Okay. So I guess you may have a problem, uh, but let's have a break. In the meantime, I just go around to check if you have any question. Uh, okay. It's a break. Uh, let's resume uh, 10 minutes after. So 5 5 5.35. 5 533 yeah
Same thing. 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 Same Uh, 
Okay, let's be not okay. Good. Oh, and oh, not about the Then you can also be that you would not be asked to that. You would only be asked what kind of that. You would just think that you would be the numbers. You can infer that you can have that. You can have that. You can have that. You can have that.
So during the break, someone asked me uh, why we care about the confidence level. The reason is because we want to estimate the difference, right? Then negative two will be our point estimate, okay? And this is our interval estimate. And why we care about that, but just care about the difference, right? the gap, right? For example, this is the income of men and women, right? The difference will be the income gap between men and women, right? So that's something we care, we want to estimate, right? We just not, we sometimes we want to care more than uh, estimation, right? And in fact, actually, this is a good question because it will answer a question why we want to do this estimation, right? It's of course because we do the hypothesis testing, we actually saw the difference, so we actually care about the difference. Right? Otherwise, we don't really care. Okay? That is a very good idea to mention, right? Because we do the hypothesis testing, which some results suggest they're different, and then probably we want to do a larger sample and do the estimation. So that is usually this tactic, right? Just like we do hypothesis testing and see if there's difference, and then the subsequent tests a much larger sample, we can do the estimation more uh, carefully. Okay? So probably is uh, one of the reasons why uh, uh, you would do a large scale test, uh, large scale survey once you have established that difference. Okay. I hope I answered your question. Um, so don't worry, the next one will be very similar. Okay. The only difference between um, the previous one and this more general one is we assume they have unequal variance, okay? So the only difference here is we would have a different table to look at, okay? And also we use its own version. Before we have SP, okay, remember, okay? Uh, we estimate the pooled or common variance, but now we cannot pull them out. We just use their own. Okay, because basically we just replace this guy, right? By S1 and S2. So that is what actually is doing here, right? Just replace here and just replace there, okay? So as you can see, there's nothing new here, okay? It's actually even more simple, right? And probably you ask what is the complicated thing here, right? The only complicated thing is how to do the V, which turned out to be super crazy. I, I would try to remind you. There's no point to remember that formula V. You will see it's uh, very complicated. Okay. And as you see the next slide, this V is probably beyond anyone understanding. Okay. And I will not, I'm not going to explain what it is. Okay. Just a formula, it works. Okay. It is when you try to even look at uh, once textbook, they would not even explain this one, okay? So in our introductory class, we are not going to explain anything, okay? Just plug in the formula and it works, okay? And so although I said this funny statement, okay? And actually turn out, if you try to look at that number, actually this number will be very close to N1 minus N2 minus uh, two. So it would not be too much different from these two, this number, unless S1 square and S2 square are very different. Okay. If they're similar size, not too much different. Later you will see actually it's not too much different. Actually, you, you see the example. Uh, this one will tell you with some adjustment. And one thing I want to know only this no thing is this is the round down function, round down. Okay, that means if I have 17.9, then I will go to 17. If I have 28.3, I will still go to 28, okay? Just, if you see the that common places, take it out, okay, that's it. Okay, that's the rundown function, okay? So that's it, there's nothing new here, basically applying the same formula we have done, okay? So let's go to the example, so basically the same thing, okay? It just, uh, we don't use the pool variance, okay? So let's, let's get back to the diagram here. So here is exactly the same thing, okay? And probably you want to 
check what's the difference. I just highlight here. The only difference is this guy is no longer SP. Okay. You just use S1 square and this is S2 square. Okay. And the other difference, what you have is this is no longer uh, this guy. Okay. 88 with a very crazy formula. And that's it. So everything stay the same except these two things. Is that okay? I mean, of course, I would do it, but that is the main, the two thing difference compared to previous one. Okay? Just use not the pull the version, but the own version, and then that is the T. Okay? That's the only difference. So let us go to the uh, case again. Okay? So, um, okay. And let's actually redraw the scenario, okay? And see that would be good, okay? So it's actually the same thing here, okay? We have a mu here, okay? Uh, this is one, okay? And this is sigma one square over n one, okay? Now we have one because they're different, okay? And we have another one, which is x two, okay? There's also mu, okay? Same mu. So there's no difference in terms of the mean under the null, okay? So if you have this assumption here, okay? So that means that the two bell, right? The difference, the same location, okay? So X minus X2, okay? Should be located at zero, right? Because the same mean and will be a flatter bell, okay? Because the variance is just add up, right? And from the data, what you get is, I don't know, whatever you like, uh, maybe this side, right? This is 40 is here, okay? And uh, you have something 42 here, right? The really question is like, okay, the difference is negative two, okay? And it's a two-sided test, okay? You can do one-sided, but you just focus on two-sided, okay? And we want to check if this area, okay, is less than or more than alpha over two, right? If more than alpha over two, then you would not reject. If less than, you reject, right? Because the, uh, remember the step one, you need to write H now, right? It's mu one equal to mu two here. And mu one is uh, mu one not equal to mu two, right? So that's why. Uh, you would be doing the both sides. So that's why you compare with uh, alpha over two, okay? And the idea here is you can't really look at this. Uh, well, because you don't know this two guy, okay? So what you have to do is to look at the other transformed guy, okay? Which look at the T here, okay? T what is the degree of freedom V here, okay? Which is a complicated object, we will do it later in the next slide, okay? Uh, we don't know this guy yet, but that does not stop us to calculate the test statistics. This is zero again, right? Uh, and you want to look at how this goes down to here. What is this number, okay? Again, we're going to look at this area, right? And how can you transform downward here, right? It's the formula, right? It's just the formula, how do we do that? You take every number, subtract its mean over the square root of this guy, right? So that's why this guy is just, how can you do that? It's negative two minus zero, right? Which is zero here because mean is zero. And take a square root of this guy, right? which is S1 square over N1 plus S2 square over N2, okay? So that is how you get this number. Is that clear? Okay, so that is how you would get the number here. That's how you get negative, uh, negative 2.709. Uh, 
Okay. So that is the number negative two point seven nine. Okay. So this is number is become negative two point seven oh nine. Okay. And we can't really do it without knowing what is this guy. Right. And once we know this guy, we know the area, right? That is the that's a goal. Okay, this is the p value. Okay. And it requires us to do a fairly crazy formula. Okay. Nothing but just plug in a number, right? This is S1 square, right? And this is just N1, right? I'm not going to do every single step, but S2 here, right? This S2, right? The red is here, right? The pink is this guy, right? And oh, green, right? Yes. N2. Okay. So that's the formula. And uh, yeah, that's it. I mean, we can't do, we don't need to do anything further, right? And this formula gives you this guy. Remember, we just need to take the number there, right? 87. So remember, we have 88, now 87. So that's not too much different, right? Indeed, it's usually um, will not be too different from N, N1 plus N2 minus two in general, okay? Uh, of course, if the variance is very different, it can be, but uh, unless they are, very different, right? That would be very similar, okay? But anyway, so this 87 here, okay? So what you need to do is look at what is this area, right? This area is simply, okay? Uh, where should I write? See here, right? More space, okay? This area will be just T, this, negative 2.709, 87, true, okay? And remember, we are doing two-sided test, there's two times. Is that clear? So this is the p-value, and let us actually work out the formula here. Uh, yes, so two times t this, Negative two point seven oh nine eighty seven true. What about the dot here? Is it right? Did I miss anything here? Two point seven oh nine eighty seven. Yes. So this is like less than one percent. Okay, this is smaller. Okay. So, um, so you reject as we have seen, right? So because this, this area, right, is times two, right? So times two, two areas is, uh, what's the number? 8%, uh, right? So it's 8%. Oh, eight, right? It's not 0.8%, right? It's 0.8%, okay? So 0.8% is less than 1%, right? So we reject actually 5%, 10%, 1%. 1 so no matter even the most conservative, we also reject, okay? Is that clear how we do this one, okay? And I guess it should be easy to see uh, what is the value that if you use the critical value method, right? If you look at this area, if this area alpha two, okay, and this number is exactly uh, given by t inward upon o two five eighty seven, okay, and this number will likely to be uh, much closer, right? T dot inward. Uh, 0.025, 87, okay, is negative 1.98, okay? So this number is uh, 
negative 1.98. So exactly this graph shows, right? So your green one is uh, way inside the rejection region. So you reject as well. Is that clear? Okay. So I hope this will be clear. Okay. And, um, and here you can see we can do the same, right? Uh, the interval here, right? This is 1.7 is here, right? And the denominator is coming from uh, this S1 over S2, right? This is uh, coming from the difference, right? So uh, they exactly follow the formula we have. Is that okay? Is that okay? Is there any question? I I guess I don't need to repeat this one. It's okay. Any question? If no, then uh, we go to the very last test, okay? Um, of today, I guess everyone is very tired of the whole day, right? Tomorrow is Friday, so. Um, okay, let's talk about the very last one. We call a paired population, okay? So I think we mentioned uh, at the beginning, right? So here, these two populations are independent, right? So what we look at is the case is where uh, things are different, right? Basically, is uh, where population one, okay? Okay, and we have number one, boy, and number two, boy here and here we have the population two we have girl number one girl number two okay and here it means that by pair which means that you can pair uh, every uh, observation okay and Remember the observation of number one is x11, number two is x2, x12, and this observation is, uh, her observation is x21, and the observation is x22, okay? So we're interested in looking at, say, not by themselves, but rather we care about the difference, okay? Which is called D1 is x11, minus x21. We also, based on this, we have another one, which is d2 is x12 minus x22, okay? Each pair, you take a difference, okay? And we care about the difference, right? And we mention why we care about difference because one may be things before treatment, two is after treatment. Treatment means you have some intervention such as you have a uh, advertising program. You have <clears throat> um, different type of uh, action. You want to evaluate whether uh, the difference there. Is that clear? Is that clear what we're doing? Okay. So actually you can see, we assume this normal, this normal, okay? The difference also normal, right? So what I meant is this is a bell, right? And this is also a bell, okay? And we should expect the D is also a bell, right? And of course, D bar, which is the mean of the D, or we call is also a bell. Okay, let me repeat the statement. The population actually bell, the uh, for both points also bell. So each observer is also a bell. Okay, so that's why the difference also a bell. So we have that uh, property there. Is that okay? Everything is a bell. Okay, this is d bar means the mean of the d, right? This mean of d, right? So this is just d one plus d two blah da 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 up to d n. Suppose you have n over n, right? Is that okay? 
So now I guess it's okay to check out, okay? So as I said, this is measuring the treatment effect, right? Is how they're different, okay? And that is very simple, okay? The result is because we can, sorry, typo here, assume. So look at difference, right? Each difference is actually photo and normal, okay? And although we don't know the sigma one and sigma two, okay, but we will use the, so we here, right, we have a, a mu one and sigma one square, right? We also have this uh, mu two and sigma two square, right? And we do know that if we know them, right, this D will be mu one minus mu two, right, will be, Sigma one uh, square plus sigma two square, okay? But, um, and because we don't have to estimate this guy, right? Because this, right? We can just uh, calculate the difference and calculate the S, right? The S over, right? The S over N, okay? This is our estimation. So um, do note that this is a pair. So there's no N1 and N2. So they have the same number there and we just do a T test, okay? So the, this remind you to remember that it's nothing, but because everything is pair, even though you have two sample, you just exactly the same that one sample, right? Because every observation, although you have two observations, suppose everything in the two, uh, so there's a two observation in two population, right? but you don't care about the difference. So exactly you have actually, actually have one observation, okay? So the main idea may be easy to illustrate here, right? Instead of talking about these two, right? You actually go to a population three, right? You can define things about it this way, right? You just have every observation, what you have is the boy one uh, minus the girl one, okay? And this is one observation there, okay? Just a difference, okay? So that's why everything is there. Is that okay? Is that clear? Is that okay? So just repeat again, because some of you probably is still confused is, we have every observation from one, or population one, we have a corresponding observation in population two, okay? And we care about the difference, okay? So that's why we can make a new population, which is the difference, okay? Uh, we do that because we when we construct this, uh, actually this is the same as one sample test, okay? And if you know the variance, that we can just do the Z text, right? If you don't know, we just do the T, right? So that's a, exactly a one sample T test. Nothing new here, okay? Just the only difficulty is you have to, understand how your two sample become one sample. Okay, just take difference for each observation. Okay. Now let's see the uh, example here. So basically the same thing, right? Just minus A and take a standard deviation of difference. Okay, the same thing. So uh, the interval estimate is like this. Okay. So, um, here is how we work on it, okay? Like this, okay? And, okay? Use the multiple test, okay? We have control group and treatment group, okay? And sample 16, the difference is the mean is negative is one, and this S is two, okay? So probably it's good to see what you would get, right? Because I think what you have is like this. I think you also see the diagram here, right? The raw data you have is like this one, okay? The raw data will be, you have one group, okay? You have one set of data, so basically look like this. Okay? So you will be have from the sample one, okay? And you have sample two, 
Then you may have some data, one, two, three, four. Then properly you have the data of two, four, five, six, right? And what you care about is the difference. Okay. And negative one, negative two, negative two, negative two, right? So now what you see is you have one data and the other, right? But what concerns us now is just this number, okay? You transform this into this one. This is just one sample data, right? So you just want to check if this data set, right? You calculate the sample mean, right? You calculate the SD, right? And you just do a t-test. Is that clear what we, are, what we are doing, right? But of course we call this d, right? We call it d, right? And this has a d hat, right? And this is, uh, we write as d like this, right? Okay. So that would be the uh, idea behind, right? So that's how you console data, right? Because you collect your data for all sample, right? Two samples, and then you just take a difference because they're pair. Is that okay? Is that clear why, how we arrive this guy? Okay, so don't worry, in your assignment, you will see this kind of question. Okay. So that's how one comes about and two comes about, right? One and two come from, you calculate this, okay? You calculate this data. Mean will be this guy and yeah, is that clear? How you get the, how you get these two number from scratch, okay? Is that okay? Um, so the question is asking, is the treatment effect there or not? Okay. So here is very simple. N is 16, right? The mean is one, right? And SDS, right? Is two, right? So what we have, right? The now is like this, right? The now X bar on the now that should be zero. And what we have, the data tell us is actually this guy is one is here, okay? And by the definition of t-test, what we see is asking if this guy is less than or smaller than alpha over two, because two-sided one, okay, it's two-sided one. So we want to see if uh, that is going to be the case, right? And uh, the problem is we don't know the difference, right? We don't know the sigma. So that's why um, what we work is work on the T, uh, right? T, N minus one, okay? Here with 16, so we work on T15, okay? And there'll be zero here again, right? It's a bell curve, okay? And one is what, okay? One comes from this function, right? Just S over root N, okay? And turn out this is just two, okay? Because one over two over root 16 is four, right? One over, one over two is two, right? So what we want to see is, is this area, Multiplied by two is greater than alpha or not, right? Or greater, that is a p-value, okay? And how can we do that? I think by now, it should not be complicated for you. You should see this is t, this two, uh, 15, true. This is giving you the left-hand side. So you subtract from one will be this area, but at the end, you want to calculate p-value, you need to multiply by two if you want to calculate p-value. Is that clear? I think up at this point, you should not be, it should not be concerned of you because this is standard t-test, okay? So um, I think it's okay, I don't do the Excel, right? I think it's very clear already, okay? 
And you can also check out uh, the critical value. Okay. The critical value, okay, is like here. Okay. Uh, right. How can you calculate this critical value? Right. Would we'll be just uh, P inward upon nine seven five. 15, okay? So this number is 2.13, so it's more than that, okay? So you can see um, at 5%, you really can't reject, right? Because it's 0.6, right? And same is 2.1 something here is here, right? So this area is, uh, uh, you can see the, uh, the orange area, right? In fact, is uh, more than 2.5%. So you really can't reject at 5%, right? 10% you can still reject, but five will not. Is there any question? Is there any question before we proceed? Any question? No, okay, that's good. Um, so here is an other one, okay? Um, so this one is uh, very is exactly the same as what we talk about the different in terms of mean, right? So here I have. Uh, the case two we just cover, right? It's just the difference between the two, okay? With the variance is not sure, right? The variance, uh, uh, okay? So the uh, the, the same thing here is like if the proportion, right? Under the normal approximation is like this, right? So normal is a bell, two bells there. The difference between two proportion is again a bell again, right? Just if you uh, try to see, right? I have proportion data, but as long as the uh, the uh, n pi one is bigger than five, and n one pi one, one minus pi one is bigger than five, then I can use the bell, right? And, right, and this have the variance of uh, pi one, one minus pi one over n one, right? So that's the variance of this guy, right? And similarly, we have also have the other case, right? P two is also have pi two, okay? And with this guy, right? The variance pi two, one minus pi two over n two. Okay. So um, the idea here the same. We look at p one minus p two. Okay. So that was that is the this one. Okay. And this one will have the pi one minus pi two, right? And the variance like this. The variance is just pi one. Right, so that is the, the setup, right? So just a two bell there, right? The difference between the two bell will be the mean is just the difference between the own, add up the variance, right? So there's nothing new here, right? So we can just do the same check, right? If we want, try to check if this hypothesis zero, look at the data and then we we'll do the same thing. Okay. So this is exactly the same thing. Okay. So let's see the example. Uh, and then you will notice actually we're doing things are very repetitive. Okay. So here the only difference, okay, is 
as you can see, okay, if we assume that the same, okay, the null hypothesis will be pi one equal to pi two, okay, right? So how to estimate this, okay? Uh, become an issue, right? It's the same as what we said here. We, they are the common, right? The same thing, okay? Can we have a estimate of the pi, right? So same as the pool the variance, right? Remember the first test we learned in this one, right? We have the S P square, okay? It's the same here, okay? We need to obtain the same pi for each one, okay? So that's the only difference we're doing here, okay? So how can you know what is this? It's very simple, right? Because you think they're the same, proportion, you just add up. Why? Why is the case? That's very simple. Suppose you have population one, population two, okay? Population one, population two. The idea is, right, suppose you are asking how many boys like cat, okay? Boy like cat, right? And how many girls like cat as well, okay? So if you assume the same proportion here, right? So what you get is you have, now you have N1 of the data here, right? All of that X1 like cat, and you have N2 of girl and X2 lies uh, cat, right? If you think they're equal, how can you estimate how many people like cat? It's very simple. If that's the equal, that means that they actually come from the same population, right? So they just have how many people like cat over how many people over there. There's no boys and girls, just the same thing. So that's how you estimate. Is that clear how you, have, how you have this one, right? Because if they're same, you think they're same proportion, actually they're same thing, right? So just pull them together, okay? There are no more boys and girls, just human, okay? Just S1 plus X2 people like cat, total number of human and one percent two, okay? That's how we estimate this one, okay? And once you have this, okay? Ones of this guy, so everything is straightforward, right? Because in that case, you just replace everything by the number you have and you're done, okay? So this is exactly what we do in the case one. Remember the case one, right? The same thing, right? But that is SP square here, right? Remember SP, right? Because, but that is the variance for the, uh, for the uh, pool that sample, right? The proportion is P times minus P. Is that clear? Okay. So, uh, that will be the formula, okay? But I want to highlight one thing, okay? Is when you do confidence interval estimation, okay? we cannot use the common P here, okay? We cannot use this common P, we cannot, okay? Um, uh, okay? You can do it only if you assume they're same, right? But they're not the same, so you cannot. Okay, because confidence interval estimator uh, do not make the assumption that pi one equal to pi two. Okay, we don't make this assumption. Okay, so that's why you cannot use this uh, assume boys and girls are human and come together. Okay, so this is the only thing that is a little bit tricky. Okay, um, because of the fact that you now you cannot do it, right? Oh, so that's why. That's the difference. Okay. So I 
we will not go into the example, but we will talk about it next class. Uh, next week, we should be able to finish all this. Uh, and then we should, be on, we, should be, we should be on schedule to finish everything. So uh, have a nice day. Uh, I will see you next week.